Hey guys, it's Jinjinx, one of the Monster Hunter math guys. So Tuna and I are working on a full guide for Arc Tempered Zeno, and we will have that out very soon. However, I did want to quickly go over two very solid weapon choices that can make Arc Tempered Zeno much easier, which is a tank pierce heavy bowgun as well as a tank lance set. So let's go over the pierce tank heavy bowgun first. This is by far the safest and easiest way to kill Arc Tempered Zeno. And yes, that includes clusters. Clusters are actually not that easy nor that safe to use against Arc Tempered Zeno. The mechanical skill floor is laughably low for this playstyle. All you have to do is literally mash R2 while stopping whenever you have to block something. And also using your radio menus to craft ammo because you will go through several hundred pierce ammo trying to kill Zeno. Of course, you can craft new ammo while reloading as you normally do on Heavy Bowgun. But when you know you're going to have to block something, that is actually also a great time to craft ammo. Just make sure you're still facing the correct direction when you do it in standstill. Also, if you want, you can mix in some poison ammo. Poison is uniquely strong against Xeno. Each proc deals 800 damage over the course of the entire poison duration. And each subsequent poison does not increase in threshold. However, the R8 support heavy bowgun I'm using here only loads poison 1 and it takes exactly 12 your entire ammo capacity to get one poison off, which probably means you're better off firing pierce unless you have terrible aim with pierce, but either way, it's an option. Also, in case you did not know, the attack before Zeno is about to go critical state, his chest will start glowing. When this happens, make sure you are reloaded as well as ready to block. Or, you know, be a greedy derp like me, and end up eating the wind pressure. Either way, now that he is critical, only shoot the chest, aim for nothing but the chest. It takes somewhere around 700 damage solo to flinch the chest, and when you flinch the chest when he's critical, he trips for a very long time, which also lands him in a perfect position for you to just pierce through his head and chest for some juicy damage. Well, at least juicy for pierce, it's still a very weak bowgun ammo. However, Octopus Zeno is a good matchup for Pierce because it has a unique ability to hit the chest very easily and get a trip very easily. As you can see clearly here in the background footage, it does not take a lot of shots to get Zeno to trip with Pierce ammo. Now, a tank glutton set will definitely do a lot more damage compared to a Pierce set, but it's also a lot less safe because you have to play so close to Zeno all the time. Also, Pierce's very long range makes it very easy to dunk Zeno out of the air with the ammo. Also, if you aren't familiar with heavy bowguns, you need to aim in the direction the hitbox is coming in order to block with a shield. Heavy bowgun shield mods have a very small blocking radius that's pretty much 90 degrees in front of you. So if you don't point your reticle at the direction the hitbox is coming from, you will get hit from the side or back. And yes, this includes roars. Make sure that your reticle is pointing towards Zeno's head when you block. Zeno's neck is so long it's very easy for him to sneak it behind your shield otherwise. Alright, let's take a look at the build. So first off, we use the R8 support heavy bowgun here. However, if you do not have that, the Legiana heavy bowgun works just fine. They have the exact same ammo stats for pierce ammo. The support just has higher base stats. I recommend two shield mods and a recoil mod. You can go ahead and summon a third shield mod if you want to. It helps with the chip damage. But two is plenty in my experience, and the recoil mod does give you a nice DPS increase by increasing the fire rate of your pierce ammo by a very juicy 25%, heavily recommended. We do augment this for health because it actually helps us regenerate some of the chip damage we take while blocking. The only time I ever have to sheath during this run is when I actually get hit by something because I fail a block. Guard two to three is a good amount, two is the minimum, anything more just lessens chip damage. Any attack that comes from Zeno's mouth is an unblockable, so you do want to run guard up if you have the deco. Mind's Eye increases the effective crit range of your pierce ammo. This is actually important because even if you're at melee range, the pierce range is so short compared to Zeno's length you will actually start hitting ones at the end. Mind's Eye turns the last two or three of these ones into actual damage numbers. Health boost 3 stops us from getting one shot. And then Heat Guard is basically required against Arc and Zeno. Those little lava pools that he makes burn your health so quickly. And Heat Guard is the only skill that will prevent that. Sure, you can just run Fireproof Mantle, but it only lasts 3 minutes, and an average Arc and Zeno run is running 10 to 15 minutes. And you can also E for Feline for coating, but it's a daily skill, so it's RNG whether you will get it or not on a particular hunt. You may notice no tremor resistance. We do recommend running tremor resistance if you do not have the ability to otherwise play around tremors, but because we have a shield, we don't need it. The rest are just standard damage skills. Now, because the item loadout is very important for bow guns, let's take a look at that. 
so you want to bring Pierce 1, 2, and 3 ammo, as well as level 2 and level 3 gunpowder. The level 2 and level 3 gunpowder will let you turn the level 1 ammo into level 2 and level 3 ammo. You ideally only want to be shooting PS3 ammo. However, you do run extremely low even on a very clean run, so bring the PS2 just in case. Make sure you also bring Latchberries to make a few more PS1 ammos. You want 20 of these at a minimum because that lets you craft the max amount of PS3, however, just bring 99. Otherwise, just bring your standard buffing and healing items. I personally like to bring the materials in order to make 10 more max potions just to be safe. And finally, bring poison ammo if you plan on using it. Finally, let's take a look at the radial setups I have. Honestly, the only requirement here is that you have PS3 and PS1 ammo on a crafting hotkey. You can also put a crafting hotkey for PS2 on there. I have never really had to use PS2 ammo, but just in case. Everything else is completely optional, just whatever you would normally have on there. Alright, let's take a look at another extremely strong and safe option, the Lance. So the Lance does require quite a bit more skill to use effectively than the PS Heavy Bowgun. But it does have the advantage of not only having more damage, but also frankly being a bit more fun. I honestly sometimes almost fall asleep when I'm playing my Tank Pierce Heavy Bowgun, it's just a little brain dead. Lance has a wider blocking radius than the Heavy Bowgun does, so you don't have to worry as much about getting cut from behind. And also Power Guard blocks in the 360 degree radius. And against common belief, Lance is actually very mobile. In fact, you can use your charge to easily access the tail for free damage when he's using his Time Waster laser as well as just close the distance in general when he decides to back up on you. And also, remember how PS Heavy Bogun's really good at tripping Xeno when he's critical? Because you can easily hit the chest? Well, Lance is also really good at doing that. Also, in case you did not know, the highest DPS combo Lance has is going from a triple poke into a charge into a finisher. If you ever watch any Lance speedrunners like Haruken, this is the combo they use on downed monsters. Also, if you angle your stabs properly, you can actually land them into the chest as well as the charge finisher into the chest. However, keep in mind that if you deal more than the around 700 damage it takes for the chest flinch while he is stripped, it will reset the flinch threshold, meaning that you have to deal 700 damage all over again in order to get another trip. Also, when Xeno does his ground slam into explosions move, you actually have enough time to do a power guard into a counter thrust, thrust, and then a power guard again before the explosions go off. This is a very nice way to sneak in that extra chest damage and maybe get some trips, however it is a bit risky if you don't know how to play Lance very well. And also, when you see the chest glowing, you do know it's going to be critical. Make sure you are ready with a power guard if you're in range so you can get a lot of free chest damage off. And finally, if you are low on health, remember you do still take some chip damage from a lot of attacks, so sometimes you might just need to get the f*** out. Alright, let's take a look at the build for this lance. So this is the bitch, I mean defensive set. Guard 3 is heavily recommended, you can play with guard 1 against Xeno, but you have to really know how to play lance, since you need to use power guard and guard dash to soak all the really big hits. Of course, we're also using Master's Touch with 100% affinity here so we don't have to sharpen. Sharpening against Xeno is really difficult and very dangerous, especially in a solo situation. Unless, of course, you use Webfish plus fins, but who got time to fish? And of course, we use a Clear Mind Charm again for the Heat Guard, because you are a lance and you want to be poking the chest where there will be lava pools and you will be burning to death otherwise. Yes, you can, of course, use a Fireproof Mantle, but it only lasts 3 minutes. Now, this is our Max Ish Deeps set. This is actually the standard 3 guard metahemoth lance set. The only difference here is we ditched the 3 peak performance for the guard up as well as the clear mind charm. This set is also very interesting because it is the only case where a meta set actually uses a slot augment. It lets you hit attack boost 4, which produces the highest EFR you can get out of a 3 guard claw lance set. If you do not have our lord and savior the R7 claw, you can just use the odo lance instead which does not need any handicraft, so you can switch it out for something else if you want to, but you can also just use the same build. Alright guys, that about does it. If you learned something new, or this helped you get your Arctep and Xeno tickets, then be sure to like the video and leave a comment below letting us know how you liked it. I also tried a more text light editing style with this video, so let me know what you think in the comments. Also, I do stream here on YouTube fairly regularly, and Tuna also streams on Twitch. Tuna is doing a gift card giveaway for one of his followers, Sunday, November 18th at noon central. So be sure to follow him on Twitch if you'd like to have a chance to win that. And be sure to check out our new Discord, the Mathalos Nest. We have a very active community of players who are always looking to group up and help each other out. We'll have a link to the server in the description. 
We know this video only covered two specific counters to Octep and Zeno. We know a lot of you guys are struggling to get your Octep and Zeno tickets, so we wanted to quickly put this out. But Tuna and I do have a video on Octep and Zeno covering everything you need to know about how to fight him coming out very soon. If you'd like to see that as soon as it comes out, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. That way YouTube will let you know the moment any of our new videos come out. Alright, happy hunting hunters, Tuna and I will see you in the next one. Bye!